Thank you very much, Humza, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's an enormous pleasure to be here today and to extend a very warm welcome to you from around the Commonwealth to the city of Glasgow, to Scotland, and to share with you some of our experience in strengthening the uh, economic journey of Scotland and, as you've just seen from the film, celebrating some of the enormous strengths that exist here in Scotland, uh, which form part of our economic story here in Scotland. There's a number of key themes on which I'd like to concentrate today, specifically on the Games and how they're already delivering significant economic legacy here in Scotland. I wish to work with you to ensure that that economic legacy can be spread across the Commonwealth and to convey to you a wider context of Scotland's drive for increased and sustainable economic growth, what we've achieved so far, and how we plan to build on that through innovation, entrepreneurship, and international trade. The Games are, of course, almost upon us, and um, they seemed incredibly far away when we were successful in the awarding of the Games in 2008, but they are now almost upon us, with over 50 national legacy 2014 programmes uh, which have been part of the achievements that have been made so far. These achievements have been made possible by the excellent partnership working of a whole host of organisations, local and national, private and public, committed individuals, all working together to secure a legacy for Scotland from the Commonwealth Games. We've undertaken one of the most ambitious attempts ever to assess the long-term legacy of a Commonwealth Games and published the second in a series of reports measuring the impact of the Games earlier on this year. We know from that evidence that successful legacy is possible if it's well planned, well delivered and embedded in existing policies. This has been happening in Scotland and in Glasgow, led locally by the City Council here in Glasgow and nationally by the Scottish Government since 2008. Contrary to expectations, legacy can happen before the event takes place. Over the last 12 months, we've seen over 800 young people starting on an events-related modern apprenticeship. Over 250,000 children benefited from the Game on Scotland programme. Five and a half million pounds has been awarded by the Big Lottery to help communities become more active. 110 projects supported by the Active Places Fund have helped to build and improve community facilities right across Scotland. More than 750 teachers have been trained to support disabled young people in physical education. And most significantly in the context of this conference, Scottish companies have secured around 70% of the contracts associated with the Games. And that's before we get to the infrastructure improvements around this city. That's a major achievement. That's more than £250 million going to more than 400 companies across Scotland. It creates a lasting benefit for those businesses and the communities in which they are based. I've been quite struck by some of the comments from individual companies who've successfully tendered for the Commonwealth Games. But moral tanks from Aberdeen, who supply the water storage systems for the Aquatic Centre and the Velodrome, said the contract continues to cement our reputation for delivering in some of the highest profile developments in the world. Bar and Ray from Glasgow secured the contract to design and install the athletes' recuperation area within the National Indoor Sports Arena, uh, one of the main games venues for 2014. Their managing director, Alistair MacDonald, said that the impact of saying you've been involved in events such as Glasgow 2014 cannot be overestimated. And we, government and business together, are determined to build on that strong foundation. We recognise that there are also huge opportunities to grow Scotland's role in the global events sector, both within Scotland and overseas. Our tourism strategy recognises that events are one of Scotland's key assets contributing to a sector worth £4.3 billion. We plan to capitalise on the venues, infrastructure, business, volunteering and skills base which have been developed through the Games. As the First Minister set out this morning in 2014, we're already halfway through our year of homecoming, with almost 600 events have already taken place. We'll follow the Games by hosting the Ryder Cup at Glen Eagles in September, and in November, the Hydro, constructed for the Games and already ranked as the third most popular music venue in the world this year in terms of ticket sales, will host the MTV Europe Music Awards. So there are plenty of reasons for people to come to Scotland and contribute to the significant event impact that the Games will be part of. We're confident that 2014 will be 
a, a, an ever more successful year of these events. Our trade ambitions also remain high. Um, for, for, let me simply highlight that Scotland has currently about £1.8 billion of exports to the Commonwealth, and we aim to significantly strengthen these economic links in the period ahead. And this, this is at the heart of the rationale for this conference. Trade within and across the Commonwealth as a whole is estimated at £300 billion a year. The Commonwealth is an established and enduring network which provides a platform for cooperation in a rapidly changing global landscape. Working together, we have a huge opportunity to increase exports, investment and our collective prosperity across the Commonwealth. That was the central theme of the First Minister's speech earlier on today. We are very proud of what Scotland has contributed to the world and we want to make sure that Scotland contributes more in the future. We are keen to build partnerships with friends and allies from around the world, partnerships which promote fairness and prosperity at home and abroad, policies which deliver for young people, for women and for generations to follow. We value sustainable growth as a means of individual fulfilment, but also as an aid to the public good, the social realm, the commonwealth of our nation and of all nations together. That sense, that collaborative approach, that connected approach, focused on sustainable economic growth, which delivers for all lies at the very heart of our economic strategy, which we have pursued as a government since 2007. And it's now delivering for Scotland. On education and skills, we've taken decisions to establish free hire and further education, promoted the Opportunities for All initiative to give an opportunity to every 16 to 19 year old in our country who finds it challenging to find their way in the world, and our college sector are key and valued partnership partners in ensuring that that Opportunities for All initiative can be fulfilled, working closely with our extensive modern apprenticeship programme in Scotland. Through Scottish Enterprise and Highlands and Islands Enterprise, institutions which have no direct equivalents across the United Kingdom, we, we have been able to grow our key sectors, and through the work of Scottish Development International, we have been able to consistently punch above our weight on foreign direct investment indicators uh, which are central to the realisation of our growth ambitions. Our business rates relief package continues to support business and makes Scotland the best place uh, to do business in the United Kingdom. With our small business re uh, rates reduction programme, removing business rates or reducing them for about 92,000 business premises in Scotland. We've also taken decisions to support an investment-led recovery, which is demonstrated vividly across this city. Investment in Glasgow and the Games is delivering economic recovery. When we secured the Games, Glasgow City Council, with support from the government and public and private sector partners, initiated a programme of major capital projects worth more than £350 million to construct or refurbish Games venues and the Athletes' Village in the city. These projects include the Athletes' Village, which will become affordable housing, the Emirates Arena and the Sir Chris Hoy Velodrome, the Tollcross International Swimming Centre, the Glasgow National Hockey Centre and the Scottish Hydro Arena, eh, which will have such an impact in the long term for the Scottish economy. That's also why since 2007 the Government has provided over £125 million to Clyde Gateway to support and encourage the regeneration of the east end of the city of Glasgow and neighbouring South Lanarkshire are areas of significant economic challenge which have re reaped real economic rewards. Around a billion pounds of major transport infrastructure improvements have been completed for the Games and they're opening up Glasgow and the wider west of, west of Scotland economy to significant economic development opportunities. The Prime Minister announced a, a 1.1 billion city deal for Glasgow in the Clyde Valley with 500 million of that total coming from the Scottish Government. The Chancellor's announcement earlier today builds on that and is welcome and these ventures will help to fuel the further progress in regenerating the west of Scotland economy. In recent weeks we've seen a string of positive announcements and reports on Scotland's economy giving an indication that our investment-led recovery approach is having a real impact. Nearly six years on from the start of the financial crisis, our economy is now larger once again than before the downturn. Output in Scotland is at record level. EY's attractivist survey reported that during 2013, Scotland attracted 82 global foreign direct investment projects, an increase of 8% on the previous year's figure, and the highest number of projects 
since 1997. Further evidence of continued investment was also evident in data which showed the value of commercial property sales are up 50% in real terms when compared to 2013. Perhaps most encouragingly of all, we are seeing a revival, a resurgence of new business startup activity in Scotland with new business startup levels in the year to March 2014 um, higher uh, than the previous year to the tune of 5%. And a real development and growth of the new start business community with a whole variety of different uh, initiatives emerging to support and to encourage the expansion of new start economic activity in Scotland. The recent Chambers of Commerce survey we heard from their chair in Scotland earlier on, Nora Senior, demonstrates burgeoning confidence within the manufacturing and construction sectors within Scotland. So we see a very strong and positive economic climate, but we want to build on that in a spirit of ambition to ensure that Scotland can reap the rewards of this in the years to come. We see across a whole range of different areas, opportunities where Scottish companies are actively involved in exporting to the international community, able to make a significant contribution through their partnerships in a wide variety of different international economies. And we look forward to building on that as a consequence of this conference. Innovation is at the heart of the emergence of new opportunities in the Scottish economy. And uh, in the conference exhibition, there have been three major Scottish companies featured as part of that process of innovation. Foresee the innovative engineering and design company who gave the Commonwealth the Queen's Baton, which has been a supremely attractive magnet for interest during its journey around the world and through Scotland. Do Performance Limited have developed a range of high quality performance cashmere garments which are lightweight, breathable, functional and durable specifically for use in outdoor performance and sporting activities. And as we saw in the film, Touched by Onyx, the iLim hand, the world's first commercially available powered, powered prosthetic hand uh, to incorporate articulating fingers has been a source of great interest and imagination. Innovation is something which lies at the heart of the resurgence of uh, growth and dynamism within the Scottish economy and the partnerships that exist between our universities and colleges and the business sector within Scotland are testament to how we encourage through the active involvement of our enterprise agencies uh, the uh, commercialization of much of the world leading research program that goes on within our universities. But innovation isn't just restricted to the private sector, innovation is also at the heart of the public sector where we have taken innovative approaches to the building of our national infrastructure. We established the Scottish Futures Trust, which is uh, delivering innovative finance mechanisms to leverage in private sector investment into the Scottish economy. The National Housing Trust is the first guarantee-based model for housing development within the United Kingdom. And our hub uh, initiative uh, is estimated to deliver about two billion pounds of community infrastructure in, two, in, in about 10 years, um, with the programme uh, emphasising the importance of value for money and learning lessons from one project to another to ensure uh, that effective delivery of value for money for the Scottish economy. And as has been commented upon earlier on, the New South Glasgow Hospital, which represents such a colossal investment in this city of a billion pounds, is now a magnet for important private sector and public sector investment to fuel the development of life sciences within Scotland. Um, we believe in Scotland today that we've taken the necessary steps to establish the foundations of an investment-led recovery. We are determined to build on it through trade connections and trade opportunities. And this conference has been a fantastic opportunity to do exactly that. For Scotland and for the Commonwealth, one of the great advantages of this extraordinary year is the opportunity that we have to focus on things that we can do better, how we can improve them, how we can encourage uh, that process of interchange between our countries. We can recognise the opportunities the Commonwealth and this conference provide to enable us to do that. Uh, boosting Commonwealth trade is one of the most important challenges that we face if we are to deliver a sustainable and balanced economic recovery. So we've had in the course of today an opportunity for some deep thinking about the challenges that we face and to focus on the high ambitions that we have for future success. Over the next 10 days, athletes and competitors from across the Commonwealth will show us what is possible 
with ambition, with determination and with hard work. I think we can replicate that by showing again by ambition, by determination and hard work how we can encourage cooperation and development between our economies, between our countries uh, within the umbrella of the Commonwealth to ensure that as a consequence we deliver the prosperity and the fairness that all of us seek as part of the Commonwealth. We've made an excellent start in the course of this conference today and we look forward to building on that in the days, the months and the years to come to ensure that the participation and the role of Scotland within the Commonwealth is able to be taken forward in a way that delivers real value and real benefit to everyone involved in the Commonwealth. Thank you very much.